What's up, everybody, and welcome to the most must-see wrestling podcast on YouTube. Welcome to the Pro Wrestling Nation podcast. I am your host, Sammy Evart, and today we will be talking about Sting being inducted into the 2016 Hall of Fame and more. Now, the news broke about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday that Sting is going to be the first inductee into two. Excuse me. Into the 2016 WWE Hall of Fame. And I think it's amazing. And I think that it's well deserved. The man has had a lustrous career. Phenomenal matches. He's put on many great stories and showcases and matches for the fans. But that brings up a question is... Who should induct him? Who should induct Sting into the Hall of Fame? I think that it should be Ric Flair considering their history together and just think about what it would be like to see Sting and Ric Flair on a stage together one last time and for the first time if I do stand corrected the first time together on WWE television now this will make Sting the very first man to be inducted into both the WWE and TNA Hall of Fame. And that is a wonderful feat. Now on to the more part. News broke last week, actually I think it's been being talked about for about a month now, that AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura, Carl Anderson, and Doc Gallows are being signed by WWE. Well, news broke earlier on a Tuesday that Shinsuke Nakamura has dropped the IWGP Intercontinental Championship and will finish up his dates with New Japan Pro Wrestling on the 30th of January. And AJ Styles has already finished his dates with New Japan Pro Wrestling. But it is... we, I do not know if, when Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows dates with New Japan Pro Wrestling will be up. I don't. I would book AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura coming into the WWE by sending Sh- Nakamura to NXT considering that he will be at a later date. If he were to come at the same time as AJ Styles is supposed to, I would have booked him a little bit differently. I would have booked him coming into the Royal Rumble and almost winning it, coming just short at the very end. Now, AJ Styles, I am going to have to say that I would book him coming in, debuting in the Royal Rumble match somewhere around 25 and 30. Maybe I'd say have him come in at 27, 28, you look, no, I have 29, have Roman Reigns be the only man standing left in the Royal Rumble match, and have him, them go at it, and then as soon as the timer's getting ready to clock down for entrant number 30, AJ Styles eliminates Roman Reigns. And then the clock ticks down to zero, and number 30 would be Triple H. Now everybody would see and think that it's just going to be Triple H eliminating AJ Styles going on to become the WWE Champion facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and AJ Styles may get involved, something happen at Fastlane, but that's not the way I would book it. I would book it as having Triple H come down, get into the ring, stare AJ Styles down, and then... And then just leave. Go over the top rope, eliminate himself, and leave. And then on Monday Night Raw, Triple H can cut a promo about how AJ Styles is the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion and how he won that title on his first night in the company. And that he made sure that he was number 30 and that AJ was number 29 to make sure that Roman Reigns, one way or another, was not leaving the Royal Rumble pay-per-view as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And that 
he is glad that AJ Styles is the WWE Champion and he wants to make him the newest member of the Authority. And then you can go on to Fastlane. Roman Reigns can invoke his rematch clause and Triple H can get involved and AJ Styles can somehow defeat Roman Reigns which, let's be honest, I see AJ Styles beating Roman Reigns in every shape and form. That's nothing wrong against Roman Reigns. I just see AJ Styles as the better competitor. AJ Styles is actually the one that got me hooked on TNA back when he was still fighting Samoa Joe, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, etc., etc., making TNA enjoyable. There was points in times when AJ Styles made TNA television so enjoyable I enjoyed it more than WWE. But, back to what we were talking about here. You can have AJ Styles go on to beat him not only at Fastlane, but then in a few weeks have Roman Reigns win a number one contenders match, somehow shape or form, and then at WrestleMania, you can have well, let's go back a few weeks. You could have Triple H or AJ Styles turn on one another, and then Roman Reigns win the number one contendership. And then you can... Let's head on back to WrestleMania. Setting up a triple threat between Triple H, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. You can just have AJ Styles walking around the ring, getting out, letting Roman Reigns and Triple H beat the crap out of each other because they have been bitter rivals, and Triple H will be trying to get his revenge on Roman Reigns for what he did to him when he took him out of action. And then, you know, they'll fight for a little bit, and you'll think that AJ, you know, some people might even forget he's there. He's not going to be involved in the match at all. He's going to be the champion that stands on the outside, just sits there, maybe just let them battle it out. And towards the end, AJ Styles can just come in, hit a Styles clash, on Triple H, maybe two of them, and then hitting one on Roman Reigns, taking Roman Reigns to the top rope, hitting a top rope Styles Clash on Roman Reigns, pitting him for the one, two, three, be retaining his WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania, the confetti hits, and now let's head down to NXT. You have Shinsuke Nakamura down there in NXT. Let's say he wins the NXT Championship from Finn Balor. He goes on to retain and retain and retain and retain for many months. Stays NXT Champion, a very dominant NXT Champion. Maybe beating the likes of Samoa Joe, Baron Corbin, Finn Balor, etc. And then let's go back to WrestleMania. Shinsuke Nakamura will debut on the main roster at WrestleMania as the NXT Champion, coming out and interrupting AJ Styles' WrestleMania moment, setting up a long feud between Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles. And you can go on to have Shinsuke drop the NXT title and then to an up and coming. NXT superstar, and then have him still feud with AJ Styles, and have him eventually take the WWE Championship off of AJ Styles, let's say in three or four months, have him keep the title for, I don't know, two, three months, and this gives enough time for a lot of people to come back from injury. Maybe you can have... Seth Rollins, Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan all come back. And then Daniel Bryan can fight AJ Styles. That would be one hell of a match. And then you can have Seth Rollins come back and feud with Shinsuke Nakamura. Imagine that match. That match would be phenomenal. Shinsuke Nakamura and Seth Rollins could feud for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. That just sounds like gold. And eventually you can have Seth Rollins go on to retain, or not retain, but win back what he never truly lost, what he had to give up by injury, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. 
and they can go on for many months to fight over the World Heavyweight Championship. And then you can have Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles get involved in the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Picture as for AJ to be getting re-involved. You can have Daniel Bryan go on to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And then by the time the Royal Rumble rolls around, you can have Shinsuke win the Royal Rumble next year in 2017 and have AJ Styles win the World Heavyweight Championship that same night in a triple threat between himself, Seth Rollins, and Daniel Bryan. And then at the Fastlane pay-per-view in 2017, you can have them doing another triple threat for it that I can end in a no DQ or a no. What is it called? Uh, a no finish. All, right. All three of the men, there can be something happen where there's a no finish. And then you can have a fatal four-way for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship when the WrestleMania rolls around next year. And maybe even rolling back to the 2016 WrestleMania, will this be the year that we get Sting versus The Undertaker? I know Sting's going into the Hall of Fame. We talked about this earlier in the podcast. But... It's happened before, right? People have wrestled after they've been inducted into the Hall of Fame. I believe so. Not for certain on it, but I believe so. And we could have WWE Hall of Famer Sting taking on a world ballot future WWE Hall of Famer most likely next year. Maybe this year. Not all the inductees have been announced this year. It could possibly be Undertaker. I wouldn't hold my breath on it, but it's a possibility. Have them viewed... For this, because it's what everybody's wanted to see for years now. Have them feed, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the first ever episode of the most must see pro wrestling podcast on YouTube, the Pro Wrestling Nation podcast. And I'm signing out.